Hey there, welcome to the CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget, entitled Network Load Balancing NLB in Windows Server 2012. I'm Tim Warner. Network load balancing has been around in several versions of Windows Server. It's not new to Windows Server 2012, but as you may or may not know, NLB is an algorithm-based method or technology for providing LBFO or load balancing and failover for IP stateless applications, predominantly your web applications, things like HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, etc. Now, stateless simply refers to the fact that we have incoming connections to our front-end web server. We We've deployed between 2 and 32 identical nodes in that cluster. It shouldn't matter necessarily whether the client is connected or reconnected to any particular node. So thus, as I said, NLB is designed for less sticky situations. Now when you get into NLB configuration, you can skew it more toward a stateful situation where you have a one-to-one -one connection between the client and a particular NLB node. NLB, it's important to note, is separate and distinct from failover clustering. Failover clustering requires shared storage and provides seamless failover, an automatic failover, when a node fails. NLB can failover automatically, but it does not involve shared storage and it also does not work at the application layer. It works much lower down. Basically, it can detect down to the IP level, the layer 3 of the OSI networking model. So it is possible, unfortunately, that you could have a web application crash on one of your NLB nodes, but if the TCP PIP stack is still functional and still sending out heartbeat messages to the rest of the cluster, NLB would still send clients to that server even though the web app has failed. So thus, we can detect server failure, but not app failure. I already mentioned that NLB can contain between 2 and 32 nodes. The nodes can run different editions of Windows Server, but they should be otherwise kitted identically. Hopefully that makes sense. In a stateless environment, it shouldn't matter if a user browses to web page A on your site from this node, web page B from this node, web page C from that node. If you're wondering what's new and what's changed in Windows Server 2012, the only substantial change to NLB in 2012 is robust PowerShell support. We have approximately 35 NLB-specific commandlets in a module called Network Load Balancing Clusters. Really good stuff, actually. You can do everything in terms of creating and managing an NLB cluster from one administrative PowerShell session or script. It's awesome. So without any further ado, let's hop into the demo and I'll show you what this looks like. Alrighty then, welcome to this brief demo on network load balancing in Windows Server 2012. If you want the full walkthrough of installing and setting up NLB, I'd encourage you to check out my series, my training series on Microsoft Exam 70-412 on configuring advanced Windows Server 2012 services. I've already set up network load balancing on my hosts. We use the graphical tool Network Load Balancing Manager or PowerShell to manage the cluster. What we're looking at here is a cluster I've built called Web Server. That's its host name that's being advertised. The virtual IP is 10.0.0.100, and it consists of two nodes, DC Nugget and Mem Nugget 01. Each of these boxes have their own individual IP addresses. If we fire up a web browser, we should be able to hit either site. In this case, we've hit DC Nugget, depending upon the load balancing metrics in use in this configuration. Now, the the reason why this says DC Nugget is simply that I modified the image for the default website on DC Nugget. I've done the same thing on Mem Nugget. 01, the other host. To show you how I configured the cluster, we can right-click the cluster node and select cluster properties. We can see here the cluster IP and subnet mask. For cluster parameters, we can see that we're using the host name web server, which does in fact have to exist in DNS. So I created an A record myself for that host name and for that cluster IP address. And I've specified the cluster operation mode of multicast, which is specialized where you need your hosts to communicate with each other, but they don't have a separate network interface and separate connectivity for their heartbeat messages. For my port rules, I've customized these. Let me select the entry and go to edit, such that my cluster IP address is filtering on port 80, TCP or UDP. This is cool because I want the network load balancing only to filter and balance traffic for my web services. 
The filtering mode is important. Single host is used for stickier applications where you want a incoming client connection to be redirected to a particular node and stay with that node throughout the duration of their communication. For truly stateless websites that don't require stickiness, multiple host is appropriate. And there you can specify affinity levels, none single or network, which is class C, technically speaking. If you turn off affinity, this redirects incoming client connections to any available host. Single again is used for stickier situations where you want to maintain some level of persistence. I don't, so I'm going to turn affinity to none in this case. That's really all there is to it, friends. Looks like I've got a problem here, a misconfiguration on one nugget. You'll notice that Network Load Balancing Manager highlights that with an appropriate icon. We can go to Host Properties to make changes there if we need to. If you need to take a host offline for maintenance, we can right click the node, come down to control host, and either do a hard start, hard stop, suspend or resume. And then this drain stop option is particularly useful because what it will do is not allow any connections in the future but current connections are allowed to complete before the host is stopped. This host is now stopped because I don't have any connections on that box right now. Finally, you'll notice that we have relevant log entries for NLB Manager, and if you do have problems, they show up very crisply and very clearly in the interface. We can see which host is experiencing the problem, and we can get some insight into what the problem is. Looks like I have some work to do, friends, but in the meantime, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.